Hello, everyone. Welcome to Vanish Chicagoland Stories, the podcast. Uh, I am your host, P. Castanis, and this is episode 52, season three. Uh, we have an interesting show coming up. And right now, we are going to go into a commercial break. And this program is brought to you by Chevrolet El Camino. And it features Tom T. Hall from 1977. So here we go. I'm Tom T. Hall for Chevy El Camino. It's two special vehicles in one. Inside, it's all cars. You can even order swivel bucket seats. Up front, a responsive six or an available V8. El Camino is also one tough truck with a six and a half foot cargo box that can handle an 800 pound load. Chevy El Camino, luxurious car, practical pickup. You can have it all in one. Chevy truck, built to stay tough. Okay, I am back. I hope you enjoyed that commercial. Uh, the reason I uh, chose this commercial to play on my podcast is uh, the fact that Tom T. Hall passed away, and he was a very uh, famous country music uh, singer. And uh, I remembered him from his commercials, but for Chevrolet, I totally forgot about that. I forgot he didn't advertise for Chevrolet in the mid in the seventies, and but I remember him something for chicken sandwiches. I think for Tyson Foods, I remember that. So uh, that's, uh, you know, it's a, uh, I remember the commercials vaguely, but no, I'm sorry. I do remember the commercials from the 1970s when he, when he did for Chevrolet, but I totally forgot about them. So it's been a long time. Uh, he passed away on August 20th of this year. Oh, by the way, uh, today's date is August 24th, 2021. So uh, he was a country music singer. He was a songwriter and a short story author. And he wrote uh, a lot of songs, including the uh, hit from 1968, Harper Valley PTA. I think it was Jeannie. Uh, I'm trying to remember who sang the song. I can look it up for you. Yeah, Jeannie C. Riley. Yeah, I remember that. That came out in 68. She was uh, she's still alive. Thank goodness. And uh, they made a movie of uh, of that song, uh, which came out in seven nineteen eighty or something like that. I, I don't remember the, when the movie came out. And uh, well, I'll look it up. Oh, the film came out in nineteen seventy eight. I remember that, and it starred Barbara Eden, which uh, yesterday was her birthday, and she was nine, and she turned ninety. Bless her heart. She's still one of my favorite actresses, and I love the show she was in. I dream of Jeannie. Oh, fabulous woman. And uh, then she uh, then had the TV series, and that uh, debuted a year later in 1981. It only lasted about uh, two seasons. And uh, I, I remember watching it. You know, it was on NBC, on Channel 5, on WMEQ. Well, anyway, so Tom T. Hall, uh, you know, he was a very, uh, very talented man. And uh, let's see, he was born in uh, a town called Olive Hill, Kentucky, on May 25th, 1936. And uh, he started very early uh, in his career. And uh, he had, he uh, recorded a lot of uh, country music songs. Uh, like, for example, there was I Like Beer. A lot of people remember that. Uh, I Love, Country Is. Uh, Old dogs and children, watermelon wine. I even listened to that. I want. This sounds interesting. And there was a famous number one hit called "The Year Clayton Delaney Died." I listened to that. That was pretty, uh, pretty good song. That was good. And uh, I didn't see him much lately. So he was uh, maybe retired or you know didn't perform much. And. Uh, so uh, what he was 85 years old when he passed away. So and also I found a photo of him online that he performed at the Ivanhoe Theater that was located on North Clark Street on the north side of Chicago, and that was uh, the photo was taken April 1977, and according to some people on Facebook, which I posted the photo, that he. Uh, he performed there, and then when the show ended, he left the stage and he uh, shook hands with the fans, which is very, he sounded like a very nice man. 
you know, and uh, I guess they appreciated his music and he appreciated the, the applause. So that's, uh, it's so sad he passed away. He's a nice guy. Okay. The other things I will talk about today are, are first, I'm going to talk about Dominic's Finer Foods, uh, the grocery store chain in Chicago. Then uh, we had another death uh, this past few days was Don Everly of the Everly Brothers. I will talk about him. And last, I will talk about Fort City Bowling. So uh, that should be interesting to, to me and to a lot of people that I grew up with in my old neighborhood. So we're going to start off with Dominic's. And uh, let's see. According to some history, this goes this goes back. I mean, it, the f- official store opened in 1918, but I guess it was just little shops. You know, I'm not very familiar with that. That goes way back. The man who founded it was Dominic Di Matteo. Hope my Italian's good <laughs> or well. <laughs> and uh, and the second one opened in 1934. In 1950, he opened in uh, he opened his first supermarket. I think it was located up in the north side somewhere. I think, uh, according to some people, I think in Edison Park neighborhood. I could be wrong. And then the chain by 1968, the chain opened about 19 stores. Uh, then the uh, when Kroger was in Chicago, Kroger Foods, uh, when they closed in the Chicago area. Uh, in North uh, in North Lake, Dominic's moved in, and for their distribution center, and but their headquarters the headquarters excuse me was in Oak Brook, Illinois. And I remember driving to Oak Brook many times, and I used to see that sign. I think it was on Jory uh, Jory Lane, Jory Boulevard. That's what it was called. It was a Jolie? Uh, I don't know. I forgot. I haven't been to Oak Brook in a while. Anyway. Uh, I'm trying to remember the locations of Dominic's, you know, when I was growing up uh, in Southwest side of Chicago, the one that just opened a few years later in the late seventies was located at 71st West 71st street and South Kolaski road. And I got a, a tip from a kid that at Bogan high school that they were hiring. And, but I really didn't want to apply, you know, I didn't want to work at groceries, but my mother persuaded me and I said, okay, I'll give it a go. What have we got to lose? So I went, for, uh, I called and they set, set me up an interview and I remember going there all dressed up and uh, I entered the store and uh, I went to customer service and they told me, and I asked them because I'm so nervous. I've never been to a place like, I've never been interviewed. I think that was one of my first ones. And uh, I went to customer service, and they told me, you meet the, the manager in the back. And they showed me where he was at. And then uh, I went into the room, and I waited for about a few minutes, and then I got called in, and there was the manager. And he seemed like an older man, probably in his late 20s. He had a cigarette in his hands with a probably a few cigarette butts in his ashtray. It was very smoky in there. And uh, he asked me, uh, "You uh, actually?" He asked me, "What would I like to do? Would you like to be a stock boy or a bagger?" Uh, I think I better be a bagger because uh, being a stock boy that seems like a lot of work and be inundated by a lot of things. So, and I said, "I would rather be a bag boy." He was happy about that, and he said, "Okay." Uh, you know, he liked me, he liked me, uh, the way I looked, how I spoke, and he says, "I will get back to you," uh, but I never got called back. I wasn't disappointed. Well, I wish they were. I wish they called me back and say, "No, you didn't get the job." But no, that's okay. That's how it is. So, I, I, in my time in high at Bogan High School, I applied to a lot of jobs, and a lot of them were at Fort City Mall, the Fort City Shopping Center. That is, and uh, then uh, didn't get them. Didn't get them. I will talk about uh, my first job, and a later podcast episode. It should be interesting. Anyway, back to Dominic's. Uh, they expanded through the 70s and 80s. Uh, their their product, I remember, was Heritage House. I remember people mentioned on Facebook, you know, in their comments about um, their beer, their uh, cottage cheese, all their food products, and uh, 
Also later on, they opened Omni uh, Superstore. That was in 1987. Uh, I remember that. Uh, I'm trying to remember which Omni was. Oh, because they opened an, the the only Omni I remember was at two locations: one 87th and Kedzie, near Luther uh, South High School, and the other one was in Bridgeview. Uh, they took over an Ashan store. That sounds interesting. Might do a podcast episode about that. Anyway, uh, then the other locations I remember from Dominic's was on 87th and Cicero, right next door where uh, EJ Cor- Corvettes was there, the store. There's a picture circulating around Facebook where they show the the tornado that hit Oakland in 1967. And right behind the Dominic's was right there and the tornado was right behind it. And that's an interesting photo. And uh, anyway, so they were acquired by Safeway and some locations closed. And, uh, you know, that was the downfall of that. So they shouldn't have done that. Uh, Then, um, so the last Dominix closed was December 28th, 2013. And that was sad because... uh, Interesting enough, my younger brother applied for this for a job at Dominic's at the same location at 71st and Blake, and believe it or not, he got it. He got the job and he worked there for years. Yeah, he liked it there. And uh, my cousin worked at the Dominic's on the north side, I think on Broadway. I think, yeah, some a, a store in Broadway, uh, I think in the Edgewater neighborhood. And he started when he was 16 years old. And he was he was there forever. Not I don't know about the same store, but he worked for the company until it went out of business. And uh, so probably got a good pension. That's pretty. I'm very proud of him. And uh, then uh, let's see. And then uh, so a lot of people still miss the store. I still like the store. They had everything. It was like a Jewel, which is still in business. Uh, they were in competition. And then, uh, then they opened Mariano's and, uh, I've only been there twice. You know, there was the nearest one to me was at 111th and Cicero. Believe it or not, I think that was a Dominic's there. I could be wrong. Uh, but a lot of Dominic's, uh, stores have closed and Jewel took over most of them or Tony, Tony's Finer Foods did. Or I've heard about seven uh, seven of the stores uh, that took over were Whole Foods. And I know one location that is still empty, and that's in Palos Heights uh, at uh, 127th Street and Ridgeland near uh, a Greek Orthodox Church, St. Spiridon. I used to... uh, I used to go there when I was little in the old location, the old location in Roseland, which was on 114th and Martin Luther King Drive. And that store is still empty. I don't know what they're going to do with it. It's been empty for now ugh, seven years. I don't know what they're going to do with it. It's it's incredible. Okay, that'll be all for Dominic's. And next thing I'm going to talk about is the Everly Brothers, which uh, Don Everly, one of the brothers, passed away uh, on August, August 21st, 2021. And him and his brother Phil were a musical duo. And they, uh, interesting enough, I heard that, um, I'm trying to see who was the one that was born in Chicago. One of them was. And uh, let's see. And uh, let's see. uh, They said that. uh, one, they were visiting relatives, and they lived in Alsip, in Illinois, like around 123rd Street in Costner, which uh, I believe that that was in the like in the 50s. You know, Alsip wasn't really a big suburb then; wasn't populated. But they were raised in Kentucky, and then um, they came on the music screen in the late 50s, and they had some classic hits. You know, and you could still listen to their music. And it's still wonderful. I still love it. And their first hit was Bye Bye Love. And there was Wake Up Little Susie. And All I Have to Do is Dream and Problems. And uh, then they had then they recorded Kathy's Clown. So I like that song. They lasted uh, 
until like in the mid 60s then they slowed down a bit and then uh then the early 1970s they uh they did uh, solo recordings, and then they one time they performed at a uh, concert in Knott's Berry Farm, and then uh, they had a feud, you know. And uh, I think I'm trying to remember which one broke the guitar and just walk off the stage. <laughs> I don't know what the feud was about. Uh, I really don't know. That's uh, that was set. Oh yes, and then. It says here that, oh, yeah, it was done. It said, oh, I got tired of performing, and uh, he didn't want to perform anymore. And then uh, eventually they reunited for 10 more years, uh, until 10 years later. And then they performed country music, and then they stopped. And it's an interesting story. So anyway, so here is a commercial that they did uh for coca-cola in the early 1960s and it's uh it's about a minute long so i hope you enjoyed so we'll be right back after this commercial it's summer swinging with the everly brothers sitting in my lifeguard seat out here in the sun and heat Watching that the little girls don't drown Radios are everywhere The only song that I can hear Is that little old song that's going around Saying things be better with Coca-Cola Things be better with Coke Someone get a Coke for me, baby Can't you see how appreciative I would be Cause the fun goes better and the sun goes better Everyone goes better with Coke The real life one puts extra fun in everything you do Coke has a taste you never get tired of Coke after Coke Sitting with my whistle on Listening to that crazy song Coca-Cola is really on my mind Things get better with Coca-Cola Things get better with Coke the heat goes better and the beat goes better Coca-Cola makes things more fun But baby, what gets me Is why don't you bring me some Don't you leave your stand, I'm told Won't you bring me something cold Things go better with Coca-Cola Things go better with Coke Okay, I am back. I hope you enjoyed that commercial. That's kind of catchy jingle. You know, and a lot of uh, uh, singers in those days, they recorded uh, for Coca-Cola. And I remember one, I had a CD that listed uh, all the commercials from the early 60s from all these uh, pop singers. And one, and Diana Ross and Supremes did a couple of those. And uh, Gary Lewis and the Playboys. And then, you know, the Everly, Bro Everly Brothers, which you heard. So it was, uh, it's a cool CD. You know, I got that years ago. Anyway, next thing I will talk about, this is the last thing I will talk about, excuse me, is Fort City Bowling Center. Well, that was a fun place when I was a kid. So uh, anyway, I wrote an article on my blog, vanishchicagoland.blog, and the, you can find it uh, in the blog if you type in bowling in the search engine of the blog and you would find the article. And that was uh, published on March 22nd, 2020. And I wrote my memory. It was called My Memories of Fort City Bowling Center in Chicago. And uh, so I'm going to start at the beginning how I found out about this place. We moved in the Ashburn neighborhood in September 1974. And, you know, we got, we got acquainted with the, me and my brothers, we got acquainted with the kids in the neighborhood. And they told us about this place. It was a great place to bowl. And uh, and I said, oh, okay. So we went there with some friends. And uh, I think that's the first time I went bowling in that place. When I was younger, younger than that, uh, when I lived in the South Shore neighborhood in Rosen, there were a few bowling uh, alleys that were very memorable. Uh, let's see, for example, and in South Shore, there was a bowling alley called Stars and Strikes. That was located on West 75th Street, west of Exchange. And I remember sometimes my mother 
and I and my brother, she would take us to Rainbow Beach, you know, during the summer just to, you know, get get out of the house and enjoy the night, the beautiful, nice uh, ocean air, well, the lake air. <laughs> it was at Lake Michigan. And we used to pass by this bowling alley. And I remember um, it, we had a bar and uh, you can hear the bowling pins being struck and knocked down like that. And it smelled like cigarettes and beer, you know, and you, you can't get that s a scent, you know, out of your nose and like that. And yeah, it stunk like the, you know, for, I was about f uh, four or five when I remembered that. And uh, when we moved to Roseland in 1969, we lived there for five years. There was another bowling alley and it was called the Rose Bowl. And that was located, uh, 115th Street and, Mich and Michigan Avenue. It was right across from Roseland Plaza, where they had the Coven Drugs and National and the Coffee Pot Restaurant. And uh, I didn't hear much the bo the noise of the bowling because it was uh, the entrance was a little far further. So, but they, from what I gather from people who lived in Roseland uh, from Facebook, they said it was a wonderful bowling alley. Uh, they liked that. Anyway, so. Uh, Back to uh, when I lived in Nashburn, the other the bowling alleys that were in the area besides Four City Bowl was Scottsdale Bowl. Uh, that was there. It was located at 83rd Street and South Cicero Avenue. Uh, now it's an Aldi there. I used to go to Scott uh, when I went to Bogan High School, and when I tried out for bowling uh, twice, I didn't get. I didn't get. Uh, in so we we auditioned you know you tried out for that I remember the teacher he was a very nice man I couldn't pronounce his name starts with an N and me and my friend we tried out and we didn't get in but my the second that was in uh, sophomore year but in junior year he convinced me to to uh, try out again I uh, I don't really want to but I did because I used to play ball uh, I used to bowl with him so we tried a second time it didn't work but we used to still go to Scottsdale Ball, Bowl, excuse me, and that's where I first saw video games there. Uh, I remember Pac-Man, and it was uh, later on Donkey Kong, I remember that. I was introduced to Pac-Man and Miss Pac-Man there, and uh, the other bowling alleys was Loretta Lanes, which is now called Blue Bluebird Lanes, it's still there, and there's Lawn Lanes, that's, uh, well, Bluebird Lanes is on West Columbus Avenue, uh, east of Pulaski. And Lawn Lanes was on South Pulaski uh, Road, I think about uh, 68th Street. That's still there. In the suburbs, there were two that I did bowl at. It was Arena Lanes in Oakland, still there. And Palos Lanes, still there in Palos Hills. And there was in every park, there was uh, called Bleaker's Bowling Lanes. Uh, they, that went, they closed, and now it's a Binnie's uh, liquor store. <laughs> I never bowled there. I never went there. I don't know. I guess I wasn't invited. And uh, so at getting back to Fort City Bowl, I wrote a story about that. And uh, I remember they had the red pin. And whenever you were bowling and the red, and the, uh, red pin would show up, you would contact uh, the guy who gave you your shoes or and you got your scorecard and you would wave at them or they had the phones by the uh the, the lamps you know where they show the the lights and he would wave at you and he said okay uh i did hit the red pin with a strike you have to hit it with the red pin with a strike in order to get a free game and i did that a couple of times and that was good and then you, you had to indicate on the sheet so a lot of people who lived in the neighborhood remember that and uh the they also worked as porters. They went there to get the alleys clean, put the bowling balls back in their rightful places, pick up the garbage, pick up the cigarette butts. You know, it's a lot of people smoked back then, you know, and uh, also gum wrappers, you know, and uh, but there, it bothered a lot of people who didn't smoke. So uh, then later on, it was smoke free. You know, they changed that. Anyway, so. Uh, that opened, the bowling alley of Fort City opened in November 16, 1966, according to the Chicago Tribune, one year after the, the mall opened, and they had a pool, they had a pool room, uh, the bowling, the bowling alleys had, the bowling, bowling alley, excuse me, had 40 lanes, so, 
And uh, I remember playing pool. That's another game I like to play. I like bowling and like uh, billiards. It's the only sports I liked. I didn't like the others. And then later on, they added video games, pinball machines. Oh, I had a lot of fun. I, they also put the pinball machines in Scottsdale Bowl. I remember that. I forgot to mention that. But usually I played video games at the Wizard of Game Video Arcade. That's located at Fort City Mall downstairs at Peacock Alley in the 80s. And I remember there were a lot of pay phones there. And the walls were white. I remember that. And uh, that opened until 1990, I believe. And because uh, Fort City Cinema closed and they moved it to another location and they expanded to 14 uh, screens. Because uh, last time Fort City Theater or Cinema had four theaters. Uh, when it opened, it only had two. Then it expanded to three. Then it expanded to four. Then, uh, so after that, I didn't bowl much. Uh, the last time I went bowling was about you know, 10 years ago. Uh, I, played with, I played with a friend of mine. It was a little rusty because I'm older. So, But I enjoyed it. I really did. You know, and then you see which ball, bowling ball you want to play. Sometimes they were heavy, not too light, or some didn't fit your thumb or your fingers. You know, that was kind of hard. But uh, now they have cosmic bowling, which is looks like fun. Same same method. So uh, anyway, so it, it's uh, I might go bowling someday. We'll see. I don't know. Okay, so that'll be all for today. Uh, I'm glad you uh, can join me. I discussed uh, Dominic's Finer Foods, the Everly Brothers, and Fort City Bowling Center in Chicago. Uh, So uh, you can join me on my next episode very soon. And this is episode 52, season 3. I'm your host, Pico Sanz, for Vanishing Congolent Stories, the podcast. And I'll leave you off with Ray Rayner. As always, so uh, bye-bye for now for me, and take it away, Ray. We have to go. Bye-bye-bye. <laughs>